In this video, we're going to look at a few examples in converting phasers back into their time domain expressions. First, I just want to start with the general case. If you have a phaser of the form f equals magnitude of f e to the j phi, you can convert this back into its time domain signal f of t by taking the real part of f times e to the j omega t. I replace f with magnitude of f times e to the j phi and multiply that with e to the j omega t. I can rewrite that as shown here. Next, I can use Euler's identity to expand this exponential. Next, we need to take the real part. This term here is going to drop out because it's imaginary. So I can write f of t as magnitude of f times cosine of omega t plus v. Now let's take a look at a few examples. In this example, the phasor f equals 4 e to the j pi over 4. Using the general form I showed you in the previous slide, you can immediately write the time domain expression for this as 4 cosine of omega t plus pi over 4. Alternatively, if you wanted to work through all the math, you can find f of t by taking the real part of 4 e to the j pi over 4 times e to the j omega t. Again, I can rewrite this as 4 e to the j omega t plus pi over 4 using Euler's identity and rewrite this as 4 times cosine omega t plus pi over 4 plus j sine omega t plus pi over 4 and again we want to take the real part of this. So the imaginary term cancels out again. You can see that f of c equals 4 cosine omega t plus pi over 4. In this example, the phasor a equals minus j4. You can rewrite this phasor as 4 e to the j minus pi over 2. And then using the general form, I can write a of t equals 4 cosine of omega t minus pi over 2. If you want to simplify this further, you can take note of the identity that cosine of omega t minus pi over 2 equals sine of omega t. So again, I can rewrite a of t as 4 sine of omega t. In this final example, the phasor f equals minus 2 minus j2. It was also given to us that the frequency is 5 radians per second. In this example, the first thing you need to notice is that the phasor was given to us in rectangular form. So the first thing we need to do is convert it back into our familiar exponential form. You can do that by first finding the magnitude of f, which is found by squaring both components, taking the square root, which gives us a magnitude of 2 root 2. We also need to find the angle of f. You're to find that, or try to find the angle of f using your calculator the inverse tangent of the imaginary part, which is minus 2, over the real part, which is also minus 2. 
negative signs would cancel, and your calculator would tell you that the angle is 45 degrees. This is actually incorrect. The best way to think about this is to draw it out. This is the real axis. This is the imaginary axis. We're plotting the vector f. I would go over minus 2, down minus 2. It would give me a vector right here. The actual anger, angle of this vector is 45 degrees there, but we want this angle. And we can see that this angle is actually minus 135 degrees. So in exponential form, we can write the phasor of f as 2 root 2 minus j 135 degrees. Now, using general form, we can write f of t as 2 root 2 cosine. Now, in this case, be careful. Since frequency was given, we're not going to use a mega t. We're going to use 5t minus 135 degrees. We can also rewrite this slightly different, although this way is also correct. I can break up the minus 135 degrees into minus 180 degrees plus 45 degrees. And then recognize that cosine of minus 180 degrees is minus 1. So I can rewrite f of t as 2 root 2 minus 2 root 2, sorry. Cosine of 5t plus 45 degrees. Either of these expressions should be fine.